Hey, what's up, tubers? This is the SHTF Hunter. I uh, thought I'd better do an AAR of uh, the skirmish I did down in Lawrence, South Carolina. Uh, <laughs> I should. I wish I'd have done this a little sooner. You know, that way the all the events are still fresh in my mind. But uh, I thought I'd do a little after action review of everything that happened. Uh, so I went down there. I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. The guy, the uh, range uh, owner, sent a, sent out an email with uh, you know the events and everything that was going to happen, uh, like a timeline. He sent out a timeline, and uh, what well, you know, reading the email, it looked like everything was going to happen on Saturday, and it, and it did. But I went ahead and went down there and got me a room for the night in Lawrence and. Uh, Friday evening, I went out looking for the range. Uh, wasn't hard to find by GPS. And uh, actually, I met with the range owner, and he kind of showed me around the range and talked to me a little bit. But, he, you know, I wasn't really supposed to be there till Saturday. But, yeah, he, he was good enough to show me around and everything. And uh, anyway, so the next next morning Saturday, on Saturday, it, you know, there was like 6 o'clock for new shooters. And there was quite a few new shooters at this uh, skirmish. And uh, there was only like four that actually showed up at 6 o'clock. But anyway, there was a lot, quite a few new shooters. And as far as the timeline, um, they said a timeline that we went round robin. There was three battles. Uh, I actually started on battle three. So his timeline, they stuck to the timeline, and we were done by like 4.30 or 5 o'clock. You know, I think we were done by 4.30. Uh, they tallied up the scores. It was actually 30 minutes ahead of the schedule, and we did the award ceremony at 5, still 5.30, which I love that, so I could be back on the road, uh, um, you know, 30 minutes quicker. Uh, by the way... I, I, I took I took third place in the master division, which I was tickled to death with that. Uh, overall, I was eleventh out of thirty seven competitors, which I was happy with that too. You know, <laughs> um, as far as the events itself, like I say, I started on battle three, and uh, battle three we had to pick up a hundred twenty pound bag, and that you getting a hundred twenty pound bag up on your shoulder is no joke. And one guy said we was carrying it 150 yards, which I never paced it off to see. But uh, anyway, so we started at uh, tank traps. We picked up a bag. We carried it down, which carried up to these two-story shipping containers they had set up. You drop the bag in the circle. You climb a ladder. And you go up to the second connex, and you fire your pistol through the window. Uh, none of the pistol shots we fired... That day were unreasonable ranges or anything, but uh, so after you fire your pistol, you uh, you go back down, pick up your bag, and carry it back down to the tank traps and drop it off the tank traps. Then you take your rifle, you fire, uh, you engage three different targets. There's one at 100 yards, one at 200, and one at 300 yards. So you, you engaged each target with two rounds, and uh, after that, you, you go through the rotation again of picking up the bag and carrying it back. Now, you had 20 minutes to do this event. Uh, most people only did three rotations. I heard one person did four. I seen some people could only do two rotations. I mean, that, you know, that 120-pound bag ain't no joke. Well, after the battle three, we circled back. The battle one, which was they called it the earn around, where you uh, you're firing, sh <clears throat> you start off at the car with a vehicle with your your rifle laid on the ground, pointed down range. Uh, you get 20 minutes to do this event too. So at the buzzer, you're going to you start you run around behind the range, and uh, you take a hundred 120 pound bag and throw it over a wall and then you jump over that wall and you earn one round for your pistol one round for your rifle and then you t take those rounds and put them in your magazine and you run up to the line pick up your weapons and fire those rounds 
and on your next rotation you get another uh, extra throw and, and an extra round so on your second rotation you'll throw the bag over the barrier two times you'll get two rounds for rifle two for pistol and so on and i made seven rotations so that means by the after the seventh rotation i had seven rounds for rifle pistol but yeah they call that to earn around and uh tall people had an advantage on on that one i guess for the most for the fact that i had you know the 120 pound bag i just kind of i had to get up to my waist and then i could just lob it on over and then i'm six foot tall so i could almost step over the barrier so so yeah that was probably the for me it was probably one of the easiest one battles um earn around but you know this this competition ain't so much about um a lot of shooting as it is your physical ability and your ability to fire after you're physically exhausted you know elevate a heart rate um, you also notice your motor skills get really bad when you're really exhausted <laughs> on the earn around you know well, after you did this six or seven rotations you was like taking ammo you was, like trying to put it in the magazine and it's it harder to put the ammo in the magazine or whatever and uh then you move back to your car and fire and it's the the rifle target was a four inch target at 100 yards on the earn around the pistol target i can't remember what distance it wasn't very far but it was big enough to hit but and then i went down to battle two which was my last one they called the moser ex exercise it had a 75 pound bag and you had uh when the buzzer started you had to squat it in place for uh intermediate and masters had to do it, squat it for t like 10 reps and then we had to carry it doing lunges back across to the cones when we got to the cones we had to pick it up over our head uh like like 10 times and uh we had uh we could have done this four rotations we had four magazines and uh so you, you pick it up over your head 10 times and it has to touch the ground each time i've seen some guys that never let go of the bag but my, I don't know if it was where I done two events already, but I was exhausted on this one. This one really, this one really, hurt. <laughs> it was bringing me down. You know, it really wore me out. And uh, so after you do the ten reps over your head, you uh, had to bear crawl, dragging the bag on the ground, bear crawl back to the barricade. Then you load up your rifle. And there's another hundred hundred yard target. Uh, fire uh, I think it was a one five round magazine you clear your rifle and then you fire a, a five round magazine from your handgun and that was the three battles uh, I already uploaded those videos so if you missed them but anyway we'll talk about equipment a little bit um, none of my equipment really failed it was all actually worked pretty good uh, I got the this is my battle belt here I run the Glock as I told Glock 35 like I told you with my light and but uh I didn't really see this is what the, the two bulldogs it, you know it might look a little goofy but it worked that's my my bulldog carriers and uh that's all it is to my battle belt and it, like I say it worked fine uh, no complaints I don't think there wasn't for this competition, I don't think it was anything I'd really change on the battle belt. Um, vest, this is Los Angeles Police Gear .com, low vis vest. Uh, I didn't really have no malfunctions out of it, and didn't see no discrepancies. Other, no, just not, I mean it just worked. It worked fine. Worked for me. Uh, I don't see no tears or breaks or nothing. So. Yeah, and then I got the, I think it was, was this HRT brand pa panel or something, but anyway, that's, that worked fine. What did I bring my, okay. The AR pistol. Now this, uh, my sling, this sling's a little cheap. It, it did work. I actually had to 
it was so long I had to cut it and re-sew it. I think this might be a vism. It was something I found at a gun shop. But uh, it worked fine. But in the future, I'm going to uh, try to buy a better sling. Um, the magnifier. This is just a sight mark magnifier. Which I don't know if I buy a higher quality magnifier. If, if it'll make a dot look better. Uh, this one kind of distorts the shape of a dot. There's a red dot in the magnifier, but, you know, for the most part, I was hitting my targets, you know. Um, the zero I had on my rifle, somebody said it was a, a 50 200 zero, so like it's dead on 50, it's dead on 200. And so, and at four, at 100 yards, I had aimed about three or, I'd aim a few inches under each plate. I'd probably aim. I don't know, two, three inches under a pl steel plate at 100, and it was binging them every time. So I didn't run the light on it, but uh, one, a couple of things I was going to, I was going to point out. There was a couple of situations where it would have been beneficial if either your hand guard was, or if you had a longer barrel. Um, when you're getting set up in the vehicle door, in between the door, and uh, and the vehicle itself if the barrel was a little bit longer and and this goes true for the tank trap also when you're trying to shoot through tank trap and i looked in the rule book and it did not say you could not do this but it might be beneficial if you had a couple 20 round mags also if you're going into tactical games i would next time i'll probably bring a few 20 round i'm gonna get me a few 20 round mags and uh I think it would be beneficial too because it was 30 we wasn't using 30 rounds and you know why not use a 20 if it if it if it helps you you know get the gun inside the tank trap or in, inside a car door or whatever um so you know this is a 10 and a half inch rifle uh, or i mean a, i'm sorry a pistol it's got a pistol brace it's pistol brace there <laughs> but uh so this is a 10 and a half inch barrel. There was times where, you know, it would have been beneficial to have a longer barrel. Uh, at the same time, you know, the 10, 10 and a half inch barrels are easier to get around maneuver. So, uh, so that's pretty much my AAR. One, one other thing I want to say, uh, and this happened when we was on the, the Mosher exercise where we're squatting the 75 pound bag. The shooting community is, you know, competitors are so, what do you call it, gracious or, you know, they're so good to each other. And this is the one thing I love about the shooting community and the competitors also. One guy, his, uh, his sling came apart. I think it was, he had a quick detach. His sling came apart. And, you know, you have to sling your your rifle or your AR pistol before you can move on. So his sling came apart, and I don't know if it has been legal in an actual tactical game, but, uh, you know, I understand why the guy done it. Another guy ran out there, he was, like, looking for his, trying to put his sling back together. His buddy ran out there with, a, another, with his own sling. So here, use mine, use mine, you know. Uh, could you get DQ'd for it in the uh, actual tactical games? I don't know, but it, it just, you know, that's, that's a shooting community. We don't want to see nobody fail. You want, you know, the guy was, he was giving it all. You can tell this guy was pumped. He's kind of person worked out. And, uh, to be honest, I probably, you know, some of these people, these people know how much I worked out. They probably feel like they got robbed because <laughs> I just run like two two miles every few days and some of these people do a lot of crossfit and exercise every day and i take 11th place you know overall out of 37 so uh anyway that's my little aar if you got any questions leave them in the comments down below um oh uh, one more thing i met a guy that's a uh, former special forces and He's got a range in uh, Mountain City, Tennessee, and I, I don't I don't know if this is a charity for uh, what Staff Sergeant Jeff Davis 
or no, not staff sergeant. Uh, Master Sergeant Jeff Davis. He he was the first uh, American soldier killed in Afghanistan or Green Bay. But anyway, this this guy belongs to this chapter. It's, it's 111. I, I, I guess they're just Green Bay, all oh, Green Bay chapter or something. But uh, I don't know if the money goes to his parents or goes to the chapter. He said their parents. This Jeff Davis's parents actually live in Mountain City, Tennessee, but uh, they're having a charity shoot, and it's going to kind of follow tactical game rules, and it's going to be the first weekend of October. And I'm planning on doing it too. Um, entry fee is a hundred dollars. Uh, I'm actually going to put it in the community. I'm going to take a picture and put it in the community, you know, as a post here on YouTube if you want to check it out. But uh, anyway. Uh, this is SHTF Hunter. You know, if you got any comments or any questions about tactical games, leave them down below and I'll answer them the best I can. I'm out.